So I have before me a fantastic little laptop that's a great punch for the price. I have before me the Asus ZenBook 14 OLED. So not only does this laptop thin and light, have great performance, but it also comes with a color accurate OLED display, which is great for creators. And it's also a touch screen, so it makes it great for digital art. Now this is not a two-in-one laptop, so it only opens flat, but you're still able to work on this laptop very well for digital art. And I'll show you here in just a little bit the use of the pen as well. So we'll get into all of that. But first we'll start with the build quality, usability, and then we'll get into the performance. Now looking at the display, it isn't super bright at 353 nits, but it's good, but the color accuracy is what stands out to me. 100% sRGB, 98% Adobe RGB, and 99% DCI-P3, all at a Delta E of 1.25. Now it has a 75 watt hour battery, which gave it some solid battery life at nine minutes and 43 seconds of productivity. 10 hours and 39 minutes of streaming video playback, six hours and 55 minutes of Photoshop, and about four hours and 41 minutes of Premiere Pro video playback. Now looking at the interior of the laptop, we have a nice trackpad for a small 14 inch thin and light laptop. It's got a great solid click. It's dampened and quiet, but has enough of a click where you know it sounds and feels good to the click. Now looking at the keyboard, nice spacing on the keys, a medium key press, which is actually kind of rare for these thin and light ultra books, which I really like. It's a very nice tactile keyboard. They didn't go ahead and give us a small shift key. So happy about that. We have a full size shift key smaller arrow keys, spacebar, and a fingerprint reader for quick access to your device. And there is a webcam on the top bezel, and here's a quick sample of that so you can see what it looks like. This is the webcam on the Asus ZenBook 14 OLED and a little sample of the audio for you as well. Now, in regards to the speakers, that's probably one of the downsides of the laptop. It does not have upward facing speakers. The speakers are found on the bottom of the laptop here on each side. But here's a quick audio sample so you can hear those. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of the Asus ZenBook 14 OLED Touch, I'll put links in the description below. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Anyone can find anything on the internet, including your full legal name, your personal email, your home address, phone number, and even your relatives. That's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, Aura. We've been using Aura to monitor our personal information online for over a year now and have been able to reclaim control of our personal data. This information is accessible because of data brokers who profit by selling your information to robocallers, telemarketers, spammers, and anyone else that wants to learn more about you. You can use my link by going to aura.com slash Kaiser to try a two week free trial to see how many data brokers are sharing your information. Aura's app also features a VPN, password manager, real-time credit and identity theft monitor, internet parental controls, and protects your devices from malware. Aura has almost every internet safety tool you'll ever need, all inside one app. Let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online. If you sign up right now, Aura will give you a two week free trial with my link in the video description. Now go ahead and taking a look at the build quality. This is an aluminum laptop, so really good sturdy build materials. Not a lot of press on the top cover there. You can see as I'm pressing, it doesn't sink down. So good assembly. As we go to the bottom cover, the bottom cover fits into the side panels nicely. There's a little bump here for the port, for that USB type A port. I don't love that. I prefer a perfectly clean aesthetic. But we do have that on each side of the laptop. Kind of disrupts that perfect design aesthetic. But it's nice because the, for the USB type A and the HDMI port, it doesn't have to have those little doors. I'm always afraid I'm gonna break one of those little hingy doors off. So in that regard, I do like that they bump out a little bit. We have HDMI, which is awesome for a thin and light laptop. Headphone jack, two USB type C's. You're gonna charge this laptop via USB type C. Micro SD card reader, so you can expand your storage at any time because this laptop is unable to go ahead and make any upgrades to the storage in the laptop. And then you have a micro SD card reader to do quick storage expansions. You don't have to actually take apart the laptop and then upgrade the drive. This does have an upgradable drive in it. You can upgrade the singular M.2 drive in this laptop. So that is fantastic. However, the RAM is soldered to the motherboard. So no RAM upgrades. All right, back to the ports. Going ahead and taking a look at the other side, we just have this USB type A on the other side. Now, taking a look at the weight and thickness, this is such a nice 
thin and light laptop. Really can't beat it. And the performance is something that stands out to me even more, especially for a good price point. And by good price point, I'm referring to the fact this is an all aluminum laptop. It has an OLED display and it has great build quality. This is not common for most laptops in years past. Usually if you had a great color accurate display, the build quality would be so-so, or it'd be an extremely expensive laptop, like over $2,000. But this laptop comes in just around the $1,000 price point is amazing. Now let's go ahead and take a look at that performance. This laptop has the Ryzen 7 7730U CPU, integrated graphics, and 16 gigs of RAM. Now taking a look at the Geekbench single core and multi-core scores for laptops that are close in comparison, you can see we're at the top end of the charts with an 1888. Now, as you can see for multi-core, it falls down the charts a little bit. Ryzen in the past was the big multi-core leader. They haven't made a lot of improvements over the past year or two, and so Intel slightly edged itself up above Ryzen processors. So just keep that in mind if you're considering maybe Ryzen or Intel for this laptop. If you want more multi-core, Intel might be the choice for you. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some real world benchmarks. How does this laptop handle Photoshop? Taking a look at Photoshop, you can see that it scores a 774, a fantastic score for a thin and light laptop. This packs a big punch. You're gonna have all the performance you need for Photoshop. You do have 16 gigs of RAM as well, which means you're gonna have a great amount of RAM. You're gonna have a good ceiling for Photoshop. Now, if you're using very, very complicated Photoshop files with tons and tons of layers, this laptop might slow down a little bit and I would recommend you getting a laptop that can have a 32 gig RAM option. However, if you're doing just normal Photoshop work, editing photos, doing simple paintings or illustrations, you're not gonna have a huge problem. But if you're creating like massive files with like hundreds of different layers, then this might run into some issues. Just keep that in mind. All right, now let's go ahead and look at the video editing on this laptop. If you're using 1080p, this laptop gets great performance at a one minute and 33 second export time of a nine minute clip placed into Premiere Pro and then exported out at full quality 1080p settings. As we're looking at 4K, it's a little bit slower export time than I've seen on some of the faster gaming laptops. But again, those have dedicated GPUs and H series processors, which means they just run hotter longer without having to throttle their performance. This is a lower power processor, which means it's not gonna be able to hold those higher temperatures for as long. It's meant to run cool and quiet. So for that, it's still a great export time at six minutes and 52 seconds. But if you're going to seriously get into 4K video editing, I'd recommend for going something like a gaming laptop. But this would be great for just entry level video editing on 1080p and 4K. It's got good playback at full quality at about 3000 drop frames for 4K and great playback at half quality at only 16 drop frames. So for a little thin and light laptop, like I said in the intro, this thing really packs a punch. As promised, let's go ahead and check out the pen, see how it responds on this screen. Touch the screen lightly, you can see it does a nice thin line, push a little heavier, you can see we get that thicker stroke. So the receptivity on the screen is great. Now, if I don't hold the screen, it kind of pushes down a little bit, so you're definitely gonna wanna have your hand resting behind the screen to draw on the screen. Now you could also fold it down completely flat and use the screen, you're gonna have to kind of push it forward and you kind of be leaning on your keyboard. So you might accidentally press some keys, but if you can hold your hand kind of off to the side, you could use it this way. So because it's not a two-in-one laptop, it's not the absolute best for using a pen, but the responsiveness of the screen and how well the pen responds to the pressure sensitivity is really good. So punch for punch, it's a great option with the Asus Pen 2.0. So with great performance, fantastic build quality, a large trackpad, great pen touch sensitivity, and an OLED display that has solid color accuracy and brightness, this laptop, you really can't beat it. And for the price, it's in a great price point. It's not cheap, it's not insanely expensive, it's right there in the middle. Links in the description if you're ready to check the live pricing or make a purchase or click or tap the screen here for more videos to help you with your purchasing decision. I'll see you in the next one.